Hey everybody, welcome back to Retail Reptiles. My name is Garrett Hartle and we are back with Winslow Murdoch. If you guys didn't get to see the Kiowati episode, check this video out right here. What I want to talk about in this video is just some some of the like man, there were some good stories of reptile keeping from back in the <laughs> day before it was as mainstream as it is now. There were in my area here, just luckily, there were a couple of pet stores that really focused on reptiles as, as pets. We had a place called Martin's Aquarium, which was in Jenkintown, that had an entire backside of this super pet store dedicated to reptiles. They had bigger cages in the middle with some of the bigger snakes. In fact, my first giant snake was actually a, a, a green anaconda uh, that oh I got one up for my, for my, I, I got <laughs> it, for my, do it go for, big. <laughs> for my 12th or 13th birthday. They had one <laughs> there. It was at the pet store. Nobody was, was, was buying it. It was there for probably six months or a year. My, my father went out and, and put a down payment and, and told me that I could go pick it up. He wasn't about to, to pick it up and take it home. There was a small pet store, just a small little retail pet store. And I used to volunteer there on the weekend and they had a big retic that was about maybe 14 feet long that was in this big giant uh, case if you will with plexiglass uh, uh, roof on it and and nobody was comfortable taking care of it because it had a, a feeding response so at the pet store this 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 retic was was there and and about three years went by nobody was buying it the the owner was not happy with it it was getting harder and harder for me to find the time when I was getting you know 15 years old I had other things going on um, so he said look why don't you just take it home one day so so literally uh, it was maybe a f half a mile f maybe three quarters of a mile from where I lived uh, I, I broke the cage down and I took the cage back piece by piece on my back to my house and built, <laughs> built, built the aquarium and, and had it in a, in a big sack and then took the snake home on my back, uh, you know, later that same afternoon on oh, a Saturday. Gosh. And and I had my first giant reticulated python. So she lived in our basement. My neighbor had a, had found a construction area where somebody had tried to build something with a storefront with plexiglass windows that were like half an inch to three quarters of an inch thick. And, and they were free. So we, we ended up making a cage in our basement on an elevated subfloor. Uh, with the plexiglass as windows, and as we finished the basement, we you know we were you know putting it all together, and uh, I had my snake for two or three years in the in the in the plexiglass box that I got from the pet store, and then I moved it into the the actual walk-in cage. It was its feeding response. It knew where the door was, so yeah. every time I'd open the door, it would come flying out, face open, <laughs> and and pretty soon, as a 15-year-old like or, or a 16-year-old maybe when I built finished up the basement, I realized I would keep a trash can lid in one hand and I cut a little plexiglass window out so I could look through the trash can lid like, like I did but it said Captain America's shield <laughs> yeah, exactly okay all right and I'm so when I would open the door everybody thought I was crazy because they'd be standing <laughs> outside and looking through the plastic glass I'd, I'd open the door in the back of the thing it would come flying after me I'd block it with a shield I had a broom in the other hand I'd tap it on the head and kind of get its head facing away from me and after that initial attack it was calm as could be that could, was your hook training that was my hook training so I could <laughs> now walk in the cage and stand there and, and the animal if it wanted to play but it would crawl right up on my shoulder it would start curling around my shoulders and my neck and that was a sign that it wanted to come out and play so i would take it off and then my dad was in the korean war he had an old plywood army trunk and i would put that outside the cage door and i would open up the cage door and i'd walk out of the cage and the snake would crawl up and curl up in the army trunk to go outside and play and uh, one day we took her, took, her name was, Mon, it was Monty Python. It turned out to be a female, we changed to Montessa. But we, we, we put her, you know, we, I, I carried her out to the, the playground, uh, uh, which is at Rosemont College. It, it didn't used to be a playground, it was just a field. And it was had a walking trail that went to the train station to the college. And we had the snake out along the trail and it was stretched out and cruising along. It was probably 15, 16 feet at this time. And a whole bunch of uh, nuns were coming by. There were teachers at the college. One was a science uh, teacher at the college. And, and stopped in shock and said, oh my God, you know, that, where, did you find that here? And, and I was, you know, I was not into playing, but my friend instantly said, oh my God, yeah, yeah, the, I think it's a garter snake. And, <laughs> and, you know you and, shock and, and, the nun when they say, oh my was, God. <laughs> and, and she's like, well, I'm a science teacher. And I didn't think garter snakes got that big. He's like, oh, well, this one did. And he, he was just riding her. Oh, and she and the other nuns looked very upset as they walked back to their to, to, their, to the dorm area where they were staying. Well, finally, when, when she, uh, I got into medical school and and my time was really stretched. I was doing a lot of clinical, about to start clinical rotations. And my wife said, this is sort of silly. We're, we're having to go to you know the Italian market and getting chickens on, on Sunday, on Saturdays uh, in Philadelphia, where I used to go and to a, a, an egg farm 
uh, in New Holland, Pennsylvania, about 45 minutes to an hour from here. Okay. Um, and they would actually cull out the chickens that weren't laying eggs adequately. Oh, okay. And yeah. they put them in a freezer. And then the Alpo truck would come by once every two or three weeks and pick up all the frozen chickens and Until then use them you for found reprocessing. Out about this. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I would just call. Uh, his name was Ed Musselman up there in, in, in New Holland. I'd call Ed and say, you know, when does the Alpo truck come and do you have any? And he'd say, yeah, come on by. So I used to get free chickens for food. Uh, we decided enough was enough. It was time to get, you know, get the animal a new home. Uh, not easy to find a new home for an animal that's close to 20 no. feet long and, and that's and the problem 170 that people pounds. Don't think yeah, about. yeah. So, so uh, I, I called our local Philadelphia Zoo and the, the curator of reptiles there said, oh my God, uh, kill it. Uh, you get a gun and shoot it. What? That, that's a dangerous animal. It's going to kill you or your family. You should you should euthanize that animal immediately. And if you want, I'll have animal control come over and do that for you. I said, eh, let's pass on that. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, and then you I realize you had it for ten years or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Who could, you know, I, I, it just the the instant on, Philadelphia. Re, inst, instant response was uh, you know irresponsible. You know, it, it's a it's a dangerous animal. You should do something about it. So I called. Um, the Pittsburgh Zoo, and they had an opportunity to, to, to house it. They, years before, had the Colossus, which was the biggest right. retic in captivity, a huge obese female animal, just right. just absolutely overweight. Yeah, you can Google Colossus, one of the most famous <laughs> Yeah, in the, in, the, in the 50s and 60s yep. uh, when, when it was there. And, uh, you know, they said, yeah, sure, we'll take the animal off you. So I said, okay. So I talked to my father. He was going to go for a ride with me to Pittsburgh. He kind of liked to do a little fun ride. Um, so about 5.30 on a Saturday morning, we, we kind of saddled up. I had loaded her into a sleeping bag. That was sort of my snake bag at the time. So she fit into a sleeping bag. It's not a bad and, solution and, for and I a put it across snake, yeah. the And I put it across the back seat of the car. I had the mail. I had a mail which had actually bred with her the year before. I made a, uh, or two years before, I did a college uh, school project uh, for my senior year biology project on breeding with ticks in captivity. So I told my dad, so I, I'm in the car. I have the mail in the back in, the, in, in his army trunk. I have the female across the back, you know, bench of the, of the car. And, and, and my dad comes out. He's got a cooler and he's got a carving knife. And, and, he, and, and he gets in the car and, 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 he, and he looks at me, he goes, Let's have some fun with this. And he reaches into the cooler, 5.30 in the morning, and cracks a beer. Okay. And I said, uh, uh, okay, I know what the cooler's for. What's the knife for? He says, in case a snake gets loose, I, <laughs> I want to have a fighting chance. That sounds like my mom. And, and, like, and, and then yeah, okay, he, you can uh, bring him out. And, and, and then he says, you know, I want you to drive as fast as this car will go on the Pennsylvania Turnpike to Pittsburgh, because I want to get pulled over. He said, I'll pay for any fines that are occur incurred. <laughs> he just but I want to tell the trooper the story. <laughs> what's, in, what's in the backseat of the car. So, so I like we, your dad. <laughs> so we, 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 we got to Pittsburgh a little under four hours. So it was a, a, a nice smooth drive on That's the turnpike at 5.30 in the morning on a Saturday in the summer. I guess. It, it, it cruised. So we get into the reptile house, and, and it was a beautiful cage. It was maybe the size of a, a, half, a, a single car garage stall. Okay. It had a waterfall. It had a pool. It had an artificial fiberglass tree. I think Colossus was seen on one of the branches of the tree. Right. Uh, it had some stone ledges that the animals could kind of hide into. Um, it had some fake greenery around around the the, 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 the frills of, of things as decoration. And uh, you know, we, 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 we loaded out Montessa into the cage, happy as could be. She cruised around, she checked it all out. And then we put the mail in as well. And, and he cruised around, everything was fine. And it was just a really good send off for my animal. I knew she was gonna have a much better environment, a better life I don't think than she'd if ever you have. have a retic outgrow you, you're gonna be able to take it down to the zoo and drop no. it off these days. <laughs> I mean, you were lucky Not, back then to be I able was, to find a home I was. for it. Yeah. Um, so, so I get a phone call early the next morning. What the hell did you give us? So it turns out that everybody else's giant retics, a lot of them were males that had, they had in this giant you know, live-in cage. Um, and my male, who had bred with a female, was a dominant male. Um, and he shredded every other retic in the enclosure. Oh, that's, uh, there were know, multiple males. In there were multiple came. males and, and a big female and, and a dominant male. And it was just a, it was a bit of a bloodbath. And they so lost. Even the zookeepers didn't know. Yeah, don't put they, two they, males I think they, they lost like seven or eight other retics uh, just from that first night with, that he was in there. So he, he kind of you know reigned dominance across the, the, the walk-in enclosure. And then um, the keepers called me about a week later saying, your animal's not tame. And every time we go in the cage, it comes after us. <laughs> I'm like, well, is it trying to bite? Is it trying to feed? No, but it just, it follows us. 
but it's relentless. It won't stop. It, it wants to play. It's yeah. not that it wants to hurt you or, or do anything bad. Don't it's you know, you have it, to get the trash can, <laughs> and put it down, tap it three times with a broom, exactly, and then it goes exactly. in the box I gave you. Take it out of the yard. <laughs> so, so, so that was uh, they were they were petrified, but they had it for three or four years. I think they had some kind of a paramyxovirus or something went through it. It wiped out all the pythons and the the, the vipers that they had there. They all got kind of clean cut, oh, uh, and they lost uh, almost all their their, their snakes. Uh, Jeez. A couple of years later, but she had about three years of a, of a wonderful life in the in the Pittsburgh Zoo. Yeah, you said you used to go to the shows to sell the animals. You still go to reptile shows? And I, I do, I do. I, I mostly I go there to sort of meet my old friends. You know, I, I love seeing young people get into it. If I walk by a booth and and there's some a kid that's looking at a corn snake or looking at a you know trans picos rat snake or or something else that's going to be a good beginner snake. I, I usually try to encourage them and 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 and, and try to be a, a an extra salesman as I walk around. Don't just, start just with a to... green anaconda. <laughs> <Hit this one. laughs> Unless you have tremendous self confidence and patience. Uh, yeah, yeah, right. Or yeah, just I, you know, I don't know. For I, me, it was definitely stupidity and I, ignorance. I, I, I could I could do one baby, <laughs> but it, but it, you'd have to invest a lot of time yeah. uh, to develop that trust. All right. Well, I hope you guys had a lot of fun. I know I definitely did. So thank you so much for the opportunity to, just just to share. And it's out. great to reminisce and kind of relive the yeah. old days and, 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 and really try to share the passion of, of dealing with uh, animals in your life as, as part of who you are. I hope that this has been as much of a, a treat for you guys as it has been for me. But we'll catch you next time.